This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Real, honest, entertaining, live. DBL starts right now. Welcome to DBL. We're doing things a little bit different today. Yes, we are, because we're looking back at our best moments, including our celebrity special guest hosts. And I'll never forget this moment when actress Cheryl Lee Ralph delivered probably the best argument on the show ever. Watch. Giving birth is no walk in the park, but wait till you see what doctors are giving to women to make it easier. Virtual reality headsets. Now that's so sad. Why? Oh, it's so Cheryl. sad. I tell you, there was only one thing I screamed for to make it better, and I was like, get me drugs! <laughs> okay, my first one was unmedicated, so it was hell. So now this time around, I'm going to take it all. Yeah, give no, me the drip. No, no. Give me the headset. No. Give it all to me. No, because trust me, part of that is going to come out in your child. Ooh. So you what think I should be unmedicated again? You should do whatever's going to make you feel most comfortable without all that extemporaneous stuff girl no you think about it think about everything you're going through so the moment they piss you off at 16 you say to them you know what I went through for you <laughs> That's yeah, what that's you true. do. That's yeah. true. Oh, no. yeah. do it. And I will. Oh, man. That was the most Cheryl, convincing argument I've ever heard on this show. <laughs> this is real. That made me want to have a baby. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't think I can go on medicated again. But she she made a good pitch, she though. She did. did. She did make a good she pitch. You can throw it in her face voice. one day. Oh, yeah. She could convince me to do anything. Like, I'm sure she just goes on auditions and she just does one note and they're like, you're hired. <laughs> like, she just has it. Yeah. Like, whatever Hollywood calls it, she yeah, has that. The presence that. was felt. Yeah, she's when amazing. she's in whatever TV show, movie, I mean, even opposite uh, John Voight. Oh, and my God. Ray Donovan, Donovan. She steals the scene. It's incredible. It's She's so talented. We were so lucky to have her on the show and what a big Family. advocate for um to, for the fight against AIDS. Mm -hmm. Good yeah, for her. She was great. And another one of my favorite guests was Melissa Rivers and you got to hear what she had to say about Felicity Huffman who was released from prison 11 days into her 14 day sentence for her part in the college admission scandal. Let's take a look. After serving time in prison, Felicity Huffman has a new mission to help female inmates. Sources said uh, it was hard for Felicity to leave the woman she became close or became close to while behind bars, and she felt like they were forgotten about. How close can you become with anyone in 11 days? <laughs> if you're with them all the time. How close can you become with anyone in 11 days, even if you're with them all the time? Props to her. I think of everyone who's been involved, and I've done a lot. I did a podcast about the admissions scandal. She is the only person, in my opinion, that handled it appropriately and well, and she took her lumps, went to jail, made her statements. She handled it beautifully, admitted her mistake. Unlike Lori Loughlin. Well, unlike a lot of them that <laughs> yeah. we don't know about. Right. right. I still say... You can spend eleven. You can spend eleven days on a vacation with somebody twenty four seven, and still really not know them that well. Do you think this is a PR stunt? No, I think it's um, finding a cause that maybe touched her. I want to see how long it sustains. Again, eleven days. <laughs> eleven days being locked up in a cushy place is a spa. That's a cleanse to me. The biggest point to me is she is a public figure who came out said she was wrong, yeah. admitted it, didn't fight back, and took her lumps. And we need more public figures to do that rather than run to the spin. Mm. Do you think, agree real quick, with do you, you think Lori Loughlin's gonna serve time or not? <laughs> I, again, I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of the case. I think she will. I think her behavior in this has not been stellar. And I don't like necessarily whether she's innocent or not. I have no idea. But I do think when you're caught up, caught in something like that, regardless, you come out and apologize to your children. Yeah. Because it comes down, you know, my poor son is just humiliated by the fact that he's my child and my mother's <laughs> grandchild. So I feel like I constantly have to apologize. <laughs> so maybe that's why I'm so, like, you know, mm -hmm. close to this. I know. She keeps it real. I appreciate that. Yeah. I really do. She knew some of these people yeah. in the call. She I mean she was very honest with us and in the breaks and told us, look, I think whatever strategy the Lachlans and the Massimo has, she thinks it's a bad one. And I've agreed with her. I would, from the day one, I thought they have a bad team around them. I, think I just you're right. think so. How do you know it's the team and how do you know it's not just them thinking they're invincible and the team might be telling them, listen, you need to strike a plea deal. And they're saying, no, we're going to get out of this. Because like, at some point, when you see the narrative going one way over and over and over again, you think someone steps in, but no one does. So that, to me, seems like they're enabling them. Okay.
Uh, a lot of arrogance on their part to even think after they saw people about to go to jail, <laughs> oh you know? God. You don't hear the time cues? I do. It's don't Tori's say turn. Anything. Go ahead, Tori. She's supposed to start forever. reading. Oh, oh, it's my turn? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Al had a card. I, I had to will, fill in that. No, I will, okay. Okay. I will never forget when Real Housewives of Dallas star <laughs> Leanne Locken was here and dishes on her favorite and least favorite housewives. Take a look. <laughs> and yet you forgot. <laughs> Who puts on the biggest show for the cameras? If you had to call someone else. Lord Jesus. Uh, Could it be any franchise? Let's, let's, any oh, franchi any, any franchise. franchise. Okay, let's Thank open you. it up. And who's your favorite, too? Who okay. puts on the biggest um, show? And who's your favorite? Who's your least favorite? <laughs> Come on, give us the dime, girl. Like, yep. seriously. No, no, barrage me with a few more. You got a little more AK-47 questions coming out? <laughs> I can tell you, I think that there are some incredibly, there's some women who are incredibly good at it. I think Sonia yes. and Ramona are, yes. and Dorinda are like, New York. Are like, I would dream of the day that I have that kind of a, a you know, Three Stooges on my show and mm -hmm. I could be a part of it because mm -hmm. I think that's fun. I mean, like, look, Luann in the Bushes was everything. I have a lot of favorites because I feel like I learn and I get a lot of support from a lot of friends. So like Erica on Beverly Hills, I'm just, I, I will be a diehard. I'm a ride or die Erica fan. Oh, we're a big Erica yeah. team yeah. fans over she's here. A yeah. real, she's a real human. I don't know that I have a least favorite. I know I have a lot that I would not want to get in a physical altercation with. Who? Well, uh, <laughs> listen, honey, I got weave. I'm not getting near Portia. <laughs> Now listen, I do want to work out with Portia because I think she could teach me a thing or two. But yeah, but I like to keep my weave right okay. attached. All Fair. right. If anybody's Fair. gonna pull it out, it should be me. Okay. I'm scared of her. <laughs> I love Liam. Let me tell you, she is spitfire. she was a gem, but let me tell you, I would not want to get in an altercation with her. No, not yeah. at all. She doesn't back down. No, and her husband though, remember, he was amazing. Oh, he yeah. He was a great guy with good stories. They seem to have a great marriage, and she married late, so I'm happy for them. Mazel. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> now can I read? Yes. Thanks, guys. Uh, one of my favorite hosts, honestly, is my boy Mark Summers. And you got to hear a story about Tom Hanks. <laughs> well, nice guy Tom Hanks is playing Mr. Rogers in the upcoming movie, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. And we're used to seeing him in that type of role, the good guy, like Forrest Gump, Castaway. But have you ever wondered why he never plays the villain? Well, he told the New York Times, I recognized in myself a long time ago that I don't instill fear in anybody. I think I have a cachet of mystery. Bad guys, by and large, require some degree of malevolence or some sort of evil that I don't think I can fake. I think Tom Hanks is the last major, like, Jimmy Stewart kind of actor, and uh, he's brilliant. You want to go see whatever movie this man does. Have you ever met for him? For sure. And, uh, I've got an interesting story about that. I worked for Steven Spielberg for a short time, and he used to call me the fang fake Tom Hanks because he said <laughs> Tom and I have the same voice, which oh, I don't think we do. Really? But that's, he used to call me the fake Tom Hanks. So one day, Tom was doing a Broadway <laughs> show, and I'll I sent him an <laughs> email, or a, a tech, or no, a uh, FedEx backstage because I wanted to meet him, but he never responded. So I've never had a chance to oh, meet him. Someday. A FedEx? Oh, he yeah. can be a bad That's guy. how you get people to respond. A FedEx? So I sent him a FedEx backstage, hoping he was going to respond so I'd go back, but uh, but he never responded. I had no before. idea that was the secret is that sending is the a Hollywood, FedEx. That's the Hollywood trick. But yeah. you, in the FedEx is like a note? A note that says, Mr. Spielberg uh, refers to me as a fake Tom Hanks, and you I'd know, you and I work you. for him, and I'd love to meet you, and here's what I, you know, Google me if you don't know who I am and I'm all gonna, that stuff. I'm going to try that one day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's worked most times. It's Not that time. <laughs> I am going to try that one day. FedEx it? Yeah, but you don't like really FedEx it. You just put it in a FedEx envelope and then have somebody deliver it backstage, I thought. Or no. Oh, I think you have to I go through the whole thing. Yeah, I think you have to actually FedEx or something. How do you know if it's going to get there? You do like, if you know your events on Saturday, you do a two day on you, Wednesday. How do you address it backstage to Tom Hanks? Yeah. I like, know. Oh, nothing to, to see him. here. How creepy would that be? Yeah, this didn't come through the mail, but it's in a mail carrier. So <laughs> open it and see. Hopefully it's not ticking. That's weird. No, go through the mail. Okay. Go through FedEx. That's probably a good idea. Yes. Glad we clarified and that. I'll okay, make good. a random letter. What's this? <laughs> Coming up on DBL, we get to the bottom of why it took more than 20 years for Reese Witherspoon and Jennifer Aniston to work together again. And Debbie Gibson reveals the real reason everyone wants to live in a Hallmark movie. See if she can convince you. Closed captioning provided by... 
Stephanie, thank you for writing in. She's asking, something I'm sure many people are wondering, I can't get tested, but based on my symptoms, my doctor told me I should consider myself contagious and I should self-isolate for 14 days. After that, am I safe to go about my life? Great question, Yeah, Stephanie. it is. So 14 days after the onset of symptoms, we usually think the viral activity has probably gone down so that you're not a risk to other people. But remember, we're still probably going to be in the social distancing mode in 14 days. Okay, so, so Stephanie could come out of her self-isolation, but stay in the house right, probably. Right. Okay, uh, someone asked me on Twitter, I just want to get to, if you get the coronavirus, come out of it, like Stephanie was saying, can you get it again? Yeah, so most likely we think not. And Dr. Fauci, your favorite person, asked, I love him. Okay. <laughs> he says that we have no reason to believe that it's going to behave differently from other respiratory viruses. But the real truth of the matter is we don't know yet. Okay. And there have been a couple of case reports of people who've gotten the virus, and then a week or two later, they have viral particles again in their blood, or they develop symptoms again okay. and they test positive. So it's possible that you could have reinfection if the virus changes or if your immunity goes down. I feel like but as far as we can tell, we don't think that the people who have recovered, because there have been several thousand people Many in people China, recovering. Yeah, that they're going to get it again. We think they're going to be immune. Okay, that's good to remember. Many people recover. The majority of people recover from this. As traditional summer camps struggle with how to reopen safely during the coronavirus pandemic, some are choosing to go virtual, and not all are doing it the same way. Some are offering interactive webinars for small groups. Others are using videos, while some are large group Zoom calls. Some camps are even doing a mix of all three. While some parents love the idea, saying it has created a needed distraction for stir-crazy kids, not everyone is loving it, mainly because of one big problem, screen time. With schools shut down and so many kids sheltering in place, time spent on devices has shot through the roof, and a lot of parents don't want to replace the joys of roaming outdoors during the summer with more time in front of a computer. But there is another problem as well that some parents may not want to talk about. Summer camp is often the time they get some breathing room from their kids. Most of these virtual camps suggest or require a parent or guardian to be on hand for support. And after spending the last couple of months homeschooling their kids, there are parents out there not willing to repeat the experience over the summer months. Welcome back to DBL. We're taking a look back at some of the biggest stars who've been on our show. So why not start at the top Me? of the A-list, not you, Al, with Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon. Erica gets to the bottom of why it took so long for them to work together again. We both played sisters on Friends almost 20 years ago. What took so long to work together again? waiting for the right thing to come also, along. I don't know if you noticed, they didn't make a whole lot of movies with two girls. Yes, that's so <laughs> true. Two women in them. So it took time for, for women to get to a place where we got to produce our own material with mm -hmm. a lot of frequency and the budgets we need to bring a story like this to life. Yeah. This just wouldn't have been possible seven years ago. I love seeing them together. It's like two of America's like biggest sweethearts, but they're both like completely, oh, I can't say this word. <laughs> you know what word I'm trying to say, bad bleep. They're yeah. both oh, bad yeah. bleeps. Almost saying it, yeah, they, they are. are. Yeah, they're they both are. entrepreneurs. In a compliment you're saying, right? Yes, they're both, well, they're fierce. Yes. They're entrepreneurs and they're great actresses. And they have a second, I mean, not that Reese has really gone anywhere or Jennifer Aniston, but to see them in the, like in her 50s, really making it, having the year of her life, it's been wonderful. And they're Yes, fierce. having to get off the canvas after making $400 million in the first 40 years. Hmm? Yes, you're saying the second act. They're killing it in life. There's, I know, but there's you no seen, second act. Why they are you won. Upset about it. I'm happy for them, but like, <laughs> they're not some underdog story. <laughs> <laughs> You Almost a quarter, Jennifer, half a billion dollars. Jennifer Aniston picked terrible movies for about 10 years and no and one And she made seen. a half a billion dollars. Right, how she bad now were has they? some si critical success. That's all I'm saying. Salt critical success. All right. I had the pleasure of interviewing <laughs> Debbie Gibson, and she had even me, a Jew, convinced what? that everyone wants to live in a Hallmark <laughs> Christmas movie. Watch. <laughs> Well, people love Hallmark movies, especially during the holidays. People are obsessed at Daily Blast yes. Live. And you have been in a couple yourself. So we want to know, why do you think they're so addictive? I think everyone loves a happy ending. Yeah. And in this chaotic <laughs> world we live in, it's like, look, you tune in and you know, like, oh, there's the couple and we're going to watch them fall in love. We know the way it ends, but we want to watch how it unfolds. Everyone wants to live in a Hallmark Christmas town. Oh my too, God, me. so bad. And I'm Jewish and I still want to live Year in round. a Hallmark Christmas. <laughs> I totally do. <laughs> 
But you do celebrate both. Oh, and can I be honest? Santa never came to my house as a kid, right? Now that Santa comes to my house and I'm in an interfaith marriage, I it's like Santa threw up at my house. It's lights everywhere. It's it's so tacky. Isn't I it the it. best having an interfaith marriage? Because I do too, and we get to celebrate Hanukkah it's and lovely. Christmas. Ooh, the menorah with the lights All and the Christmas right, no. tree. And the Hanukkah bush. Yes. It's good. Wait, I don't have a Hanukkah bush. <laughs> oh. Will you tell me about the Hanukkah bush? To be honest, it's just a little Christmas tree. <laughs> oh. well, you guys need to get your heads out of oh the gutter. Oh, my God. Get y'all. your heads. What are you talking out about? Out of the I don't I did not it. say anything. How dead sacrilegious. Don't you put that on me. That is sacrilegious. I didn't you. say anything. I didn't say one Switch thing. Switch gears, Jeff. Switch gears. All Go right. Ahead. The Masked Singer <laughs> is a show that delights and baffles many. And we had the pleasure of speaking with one of the hosts, Ken Jeong. Here's what he told Tori. Let's watch. <laughs> I want to ask, you're a judge on Masked Singer. What is it about this epically weird show? We talk about it every week that connects with audiences so much. It's the number one show in Korea, and I'm of Korean descent. And my mom sent me like video links of the show and she said, she said, and I quote, you know, this show will be a hit and this will be good for your career. Whoa. And she actually said that. I'm not even kidding. So basically, I did the show, you know, to please my your mom. mom. <laughs> and so it, it really did. I was like, all right, just get off my back. I'll do the show, you know? You were a terrible, notoriously terrible guesser. You once mistook your own former co-star Margaret Cho for Melissa Rivers. <laughs> I think I think maybe like like that Joan like Melissa Rivers, maybe. <laughs> Any easier for you? No, I've gotten dumber. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Okay. I think I'm like the Homer Simpson of the show in terms of guesses. Um, now, yeah. in honor of yeah. First I mean, when, when you think when you think the poodle is Dog the Bounty Hunter, that that proved that pretty much, <laughs> that which was a real guess there. of mine last yeah, year. Yeah, that was a hard hard yeah. no on that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> he was lovely to talk to and very, very giving and very kind. And you can always tell an improv actor he was willing to sort of play. And it was just a real delight talking to you him. You told me, and I did not know this, that he was a medical doctor he's for a real, years. Oh, he's a licensed doctor. And during one of his stand-up specials, someone choked or had a seizure, I'm not sure which, and he got off the stage, ran over, and saved the guy and helped the guy. That's a great... You didn't wonder why they called him Dr. Ken? I've never heard anybody call him Dr. Ken. Well, That's where he started. Yeah. Never yeah. heard anybody call him Dr. Ken. He's a rapper? Ken. Yeah, he's never a... heard that. I just heard people call him by his name, Ken. Okay. You you call him Dr. Ken? His That's sitcom his main, is main called, called uh, character. Oh, okay, well, that's his sitcom, Al. I didn't know it was based on real life. What do you think, they just the name out of a hat? Didn't realize it was based on real life. A lot of sitcoms aren't. We'll be right back. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, DBL Nation? I'm Brandon London. I told my mom at a young age I wanted to play professional football, and she said, show me. So I worked my tail off. I would describe myself as the host that brings energy to the panel. Are you not entertained? <laughs> my perspective doesn't really come from a book. It comes from different experiences. This is that social injustice that Colin Kaepernick took a knee for. The co-host that makes me most hopeful is hands down my big sister, Erica Cobb. She just makes me better as a person. Not only on camera, but off camera. Don't show her that. DBL is raw, DBL is live, DBL is opinionated, and DBL is what you should be watching. Nation, we here at DPL are going to continue to keep you informed, keep you guys informed during this coronavirus pandemic. And in the meantime, we want you guys to be safe. Stay safe out there. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. And practice social distancing. Practice social distancing. Together, we're going to help try and contain this virus as much as possible. Because we're all in this together. We're all in this together. We are all in this together. And we're all going to get through this together. Stay safe, everybody. DBL, just in case you didn't know, we do nearly five hours of live television every single day, and sometimes that means 
we mess up. Not me. Right out. Mm. Oh, this is going to be This is the result be can be hilarious. Enjoy. I can't say homeless person. How, how do I, am I going to describe him? Person without a home. <laughs> what are you talking about? You always give me these looks like, <laughs> how dare you? Show in the shower time. Well, maybe you should make the reservation for when you know she's actually going to be ready. My son weighs 25 pounds and I have to pay $400 for his ticket and you're going to bring a mini horse next to me I never after that? Though. It's Friday, you like Sam, it. Sam, Sam, <laughs> get off. What a first aid kit. Whoa. Like that. Uh, what do you think, Jeff? I wasn't even listening. <laughs> Wait, so what? <laughs> Cinderella is just boring. Sleeping Booty slept the whole time. Yeah. Sleeping Booty. Sleeping that's a, that's Booty. another. You're saying Hercule Poirot from Agatha Christie, now make her a black woman. What? That, that's okay. the detective from, okay. you know. Uh, who? Hercule Poirot. <laughs> Who's that? From Agatha Christie, the mustached uh, detective. It's like the famous is, detective. What is a reference that people know? <laughs> Agatha Christie. The, oh my God. the famous detective. Wow. <laughs> All right. so we're going to have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can too. We have so many bloopers. Wow. We could just Gosh. a whole day's worth of bloopers. Oh, many. I think we get it right most times. Like that's pretty impressive. What four hours a day we go? No, like four and a half hours a day. Is it four and a half? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Three, it's a four, lot of four and a half. Four and did a half. I say four and a half? Yeah, you did. You just messed up. We're <laughs> we gonna just put that messed on up on a blooper reel segment. <laughs> yeah, it's four and a half. <laughs> How much time do we have left? Okay, well, oh. 20 more seconds. Why don't mess up one more time, Tori told a joke. Okay, okay. No. no okay. Please, okay. Okay. please, just one. Wow, I'm getting the vote is You're out. You're like an out. old no. grandpa with your it's jokes. It's two to like, two How to do go. you have that many? Because I think they're funny. Well, give Look them up on the internet. <laughs> That's sad. I have the body of a god. Too bad it's Buddha. That's he's on a he, it's just some people he is. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be I right told back. You. <laughs> Promotional consideration is brought to you by. Check it out. So we are at our time capsule. Okay. Um, which was buried in 1994, um, and so we won't be able to find out what's inside until 2094. There's a lot of conspiracies that involve this. One so being this logo right here and right here, the Freemason logo. Why is a Freemason logo on a time capsule? So there are, are two large charitable, charitable organizations, which okay. are the Masonic Lodges here in Colorado, and they helped us build this, and they helped us bring it here. So this is a tribute to them. So there's nothing that involves the Illuminati inside the nothing, time capsule? Well, I don't know. You might have to wait until 2094 to find out. I have a lot of other questions about your airport. I'm ready to address them. And first, the tunnels. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's go. All right. This way? Yep. So is this, this is the basement? These are the tunnels. You're in it. But this says, this is the bottom floor? Yep. It says three. three. I know. There's not a two or a one. Oh, let the conspiracies begin. All right, Alex. So right now we are in the tunnels. We just got off the elevator. We're in the belly of the beast. So at first glance, what's going on down here is people are taking your baggage from the plane to the baggage carousel. That's right. It's not all that spooky, and it's folks working down here. So we have around 33,000 employees at Denver International Airport. So there could be hundreds to thousands of folks working in the tunnels every day. Where does the president go when he's here? There's no bunker for the president. There's no underground getaway. Unfortunately, I hate to tell you that, but these are just really places to get your baggage from the aircraft to the baggage carousel. Where does so. that door go? Okay, Alex, so we checked out a lot of the conspiracies inside DIA, but now we're at one of the more well-known conspiracy sites. We're on some land that the public can't get to, right? That's right. So I'm very excited about this one. Are you ready? Yeah, let's go check it out. Let's go. Guys, so if you have ever flown into Denver International Airport, you have definitely seen this Mustang, and we are actually in its undercarriage, a very unique perspective of what's going on. But there's a lot of conspiracies, Alex, that follow this blue Mustang. In fact, around Denver, we call it Blucifer. 
So the story around Denver goes that a piece of Mustang actually fell on the artist while he was making this, which ultimately led to his death. So Luis Jimenez was the artist okay. who created Mustang. And his injuries due to constructing Mustang led to his death. So that's true. That's true. Um, but we can be thankful to have Mustang with us here today because his kids finished up Mustang. And so that's why you drive by and you see his big, beautiful blue face. So a silver lining, let's silver say. Silver lining. So there is no evil spirits going on in Mustang, even though they have the scary red eyes. Definitely not. Those scary red eyes are a tribute to his dad, who owned a neon shop. And we like to think of Mustang as a gateway to the West. Welcome back to DBL. You know we save the best for last. We do a lot of joking around on the show, especially Al, but there's one thing that he's very serious about, his food, and you don't want to mess with Al's Postmates. Me Sam, too. can we talk about what happened? What? I ordered Postmates. <laughs> <laughs> Postmates means we're going to deliver it to your post, and for some reason I picked to your post. the pickup, which no one in the history of the world's ever done. <laughs> I didn't even know that was an option. Yeah, because you would just and call the restaurant. And now I have sushi sitting <laughs> for God knows how long at God knows where. <laughs> Bring my sushi, Postmates. That's yeah. the only reason people use your business. That's people true. don't need to. We know how to. We know how to place a pickup order. We didn't need an app for that. We then realized we're too lazy to pick up our pickup order. And here's where you guys start earning your money. This is when you go pick up our order and bring it to our lazy homes or jobs. So it's just sitting Bring there. my sushi. Do we have some breaking news? Is that what's going on over here? That's Michael Dean. Look at our, our, our producer, producer, Michael producer. Dean. Look at this guy. Yeah, wow. Michael Dean. <laughs> so, Al, what's the problem? Fontana Sushi, is that you, Al? It's, yes, it said pickup, though. Wow. You and now got I got it wrong. Oh, and man. God, I was talking about mistakes, Yeah, Al. he got it wrong. You, you, might, you have to, to issue Postmates. an apology. It, yeah. All right, it does. Which, what camera should I go to, Sam? The shame, the shame, yeah, the shame camera. Yeah, you need camera. to apologize. You need to apologize. <laughs> What's up, Postmates? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you get up late, you don't have breakfast, and you order some sushi, and you think it's not coming, you get a little hangry. It's here. Sometimes you have access to a live TV camera and you say Abuse some things it. you regret. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here to say I'm sorry. Not only the Fontana Sushi, you guys do such great work, but also you, Postmates, you got me through tough times, my clothes as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, just for that. What? Just for that what? I'm going to admit one time on the air. What? Al Jackson was wrong. You know what, though, Al? You weren't wrong. I was not wrong. Because Tell the people. Okay, because I was there and I watched someone had to go get it for Al from what? the studio. No way. So it was Jure. never delivered. Oh, it was no Jure. way. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. I didn't yes. know that. I like, no, this so didn't you work. need to take back was, your apology. I take it go back. Go back to your one. Where is give me the, the camera? Give me the non-shame camera. The, give him the non-shame camera. Yeah, take it back. Postmates, shame on you. <laughs> you guys let, you guys let Jure do your job. <laughs> Apologize and give us some free...